Hi everyone, I'm Erin Dugan from Fox 56 Sports and welcome to the High School Hoops pregame report. Well, since Tuesday, area teams in District 2 have been involved in Suits and Sneakers League for Coaches vs. Cancer. Tonight, we aim to help the cause as we showcase Mid-Valley and Old Forge in the Lackawanna League Boys Basketball game. The Spartans sit atop the District 2 AAA standings and are in a battle for Division 3 of the league. Old Forge is the defending champion in single A, but with the new classifications, they now move up to double A. The Blue Devils have not beaten the Spartans in 10 games, dating all the way back to 2011. I'll be back during tonight's game with special interviews and to tell you how you can make a donation to Coaches vs. Cancer. Time now to get you out to this week's High School Hoops. It's High School Hoops on MyTV WQMY, brought to you by Wendy's. Welcome to Al Samantha Court inside the Devil's Den at Old Forge High School, where tonight it's a Lackawanna League Division III showdown between Mid Valley and Old Forge. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob I, joined by Doug Walls tonight. Aaron Dugan will join us shortly. And boy, there's chaos at the top of the Lackawanna League Division III standings. If we take a look at those right now, as Mid Valley beat Dunmore last night, three teams, four and one, combined with Holy Cross. So chaos now as we come to the end of the first half. Yeah, all three of these teams. Play tonight, they all have one loss, so you very well could see a three-way tie on Saturday. Let's talk about last night's game. Spartans beat Dunmore, but Brad Kalinowski, their leading scorer, did not have a good night. They're going to need him tonight. Well, he spent a little time on the bench in foul trouble. He's a senior, though. He's a first-teamer, Division Three All-Star from last year. He's a versatile player. He can score. He can rebound. He can assist. He's a good defender. He's smart. He averages 15 points a game. That's good for second in Division three. He shoots the three pretty well, and he's also a 70% foul shooter, Bob. How about for Old Forge? Who do they need to count on? Well, you're going to have to go big inside with Big Ben Grahowski. He's one of two seniors that starts. They're going to count on him for a lot of leadership. He's 68 points, is the most on the team. He averages 13 points a game. That's good for top five in the division. And he's not going to leave the paint too often. He's got to control the boards. Mid Valley has controlled Old Forge for almost the last six years. To continue that, what do they need to do tonight? Well, Mid Valley has to offensive rebound and they have to execute offensively. When they're forced to set up in the half court, most teams will make them do that. They have to be patient, proper in their execution, and we talked about the rebounding. They aren't big, but the team that controls the glass usually wins the ball game. Now, if you're Old Forge, you want to slow this game down. You got to slow the tempo. It's got to be 45 points or less. They do not want to run with Mid Valley and they got to make perimeter jumpers. The ball's got to go inside and then come back outside for the jumpers. It's a special night here at Old Forge. Suits and Sneakers Week continues for Coaches versus Cancer. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip. You're watching the Rivalry of the Week on MyTV WQMY, presented by Wendy's. Both teams on the floor ready to go. Here's the Mid-Valley starting lineup. Hold on, Golinski, Goldsberger, Kalinowski, and Tanner gets the start. Mid Valley 12 2 overall. Pro Forge 3 and 10 on the season. For Husky will be the center. Nee Smith Welsh Berespi are your guards. Four new starters in there, Doug. For Husky got the start a year ago. Yeah, only two seniors to start Smith and Grahowski for Old Forge. More experience on Mid Valley's team. Jack Gaffney, Randy Wolf. Justin Carney, your referees tonight, very experienced crew, and it will go over to Mid Valley. There's Kalinowski, number 11, the leading scorer coming in and had a sit last night, as Doug mentioned, in the game against Dunmore. Old Forge comes out in a triangle and two defense, Bob. Two guys will guard man to man, and the other three guys will play zone. Smith guards Kalinowski. The good thing last night against Dunmore, R.J. Goolsbury picked up the slack. He scored a season-high 18 points in their win against the Bucks last night. Big rebound, that's Goolsbury. Goolsbury, excuse me, who had the ball. Spartan ball underneath. Good footwork by Goolsbury. Grahowski's gonna have his hands full, keeping Goolsbury off the glass. Biggest guy on the floor tonight is the aforementioned Grahusky at 6-4. Good block. 
And back the other way. Brandon Knee skying for that block. And the ball stepped on the, bo the boundary line down there underneath, so Old Fords will get underneath their own basket. Watch for the inbounder after this. Old Forge should have a advantage on, in the rebounding department. Grohuski's going to pick up a quick foul, I think. Yeah. Tanner tried to get up and dribble it. Grohuski grabbed his arm a little bit, I think. Better serve to let him go there. They actually are going to call it on Kevin Welsh. They got Welsh, okay. Yep. Welsh with his first personal. No score here early on. Welsh is guarding Tanner in the triangle in two. Insider Urso, and it's going to be a jump ball called. It will go over to the Blue Devils. If you're Mid Valley, you might want to just run your man to man offense rather than key on trying to get Tanner and Kalinowski open. Just run your regular man to man set. We'll see Old Forge run some clock here. Weave it for quite some time. And they're, they're big guy. Leading scorer on the team. They have plenty of time. No shot clock in high school. Yeah, I'd like to see a shot clock in high school. Maybe 40, 45 seconds might help the game around here. I think some of the college coaches would like to see that. I mean, especially when you're coming to recruit, it gives them a better sense of what how the player is. Yeah, I remember coaches used to come up and they say, oh, I'm, I can't drive all the way up to Northeast of Pennsylvania to recruit guys in a 32-30 game. I can't see a guy do anything. Oh, I think it's going to go against the Spartans on a block on Tanner. Yeah, Noah like, Tanner. Yeah, it looked like Toner, Tanner used his hand to try to get open, pushed off. That's what the triangle and two will do. It'll get you frustrated because Kevin Welsh is in Tanner's grill. Roski. First two points of the game for either side. You see why he's effective. He's a big guy, but he can step away and shoot that jumper. Got to attack this at the high post. Galinsky takes advantage of the middle. On the floor, another foul on the Blue Devils. J.J. Galinsky had a super night last night versus Dunmore. He made two key threes late in the ball game. That's against Varespi, his first. Already team second. Noel Tanner, another quick foul. Told you, these are very good referees. Well, they put two hands on him, knee. Put two hands on him, they tell you to automatically call that. Galinsky with his first. Trying to post up Poland inside. Tanner good at getting the ball into the lane. He brings it down. He'll come up 2-0 Old Forge. Just about two and a half minutes into this game. Kind of the pace Old Forge wants to see. Slow it down. Wait for the open shot. They want a high force set. Pulling Mid-Valley away from the basket. Smith with a nice rebound. And that one is in and out by Welsh. Yeah, they don't mind that, Kevin Welsh shooting that three. These three shooters on uh, Old Forge are top in the, tops in the league in three-point shooting. Spartans want to play much faster of a pace, get quicker shots, and that's a nice shot outside by Glinski. That good patience by Mid-Valley there. Skip pass across the floor to Glinski. That was his 12th three of the season. He had 17 last night against Dunmore in the win. Made two key threes, as I said before, late in the ball game. He's playing with a lot more confidence now. Rahusky gets it back. Trying to go against Urso. A little left-handed up and under is good. Boy, good footwork. Nice move by big Ben Grahusky. Looks like they're concentrating on putting the ball in Grahusky's hands tonight. Kalinowski quickly down. One point lead for the Spartans. That's how Mid Valley likes to play so fast, Bob. Quickly up the floor, they scored five seconds after the Grahowski basket. Old 
Gold Fords being patient in their half-court offense. Big shot downtown, Joey Varespi. Yeah, Brandon Knee driving the ball, drawing the help. Varespi spots up on the perimeter. That's what Gold Fords will do. Varespi is a streaky shooter, so if he gets hot, he could be a dangerous weapon. Urso right around Varespi. R.J. Goolsbury, he's got good footwork himself. Two big fellas in there gonna go at it, Grahowski and Goolsbury. Grahowski's a little taller than Goolsbury. Kalinowski on an easy steal and for two more. He's got four points here in the first quarter. You know what, Tanner with the good defense and the look ahead to Brad Kalinowski. Trying to get Grahowski, they're actively trying to get the ball to Grahowski. So 2.58 remaining, back and forth, low scoring early on here, but two point lead for the Spartans of Mid Valley. Back here. Valley jumper, Glinski in the corner, across court from Tanner. And then you see Knee taking it down, drawing the help defense, finding Varespi in the corner, and nothing but net. So look, here's the matchup we're looking for. Uh, already we've seen some action from Tanner and Varespi. Yeah, Varespi third leading scorer, can put up three, as you saw on the replay there. He's quick off the dribble, he's a good defender. And Noah Tanner loves to get the ball into the lane. He, he finishes well, and he also finds his teammates in there. Tanner, a three-year starter, has the ball. At 26 against Mountain View, three of those were for three, is high on the season. Yeah, he's the second leading scorer for Mid Valley, behind Kalinowski. Ursel showing some moves, and they're gonna get a foul. Two-shot foul. So, James Ursel to the line. Let's see who this is on. I think it's going to be on Grahusky. So Grahusky picks up his first foul. Urso at the line, misses his first. He's a 50% shooter on the season. Makes one of two, a three point lead now for Mid Valley. He converts. This is where they're gonna try to pick up the pace, full court press, and they pick up a foul. Calling it kind of tight this first quarter. There's a lot of fouls called so far. Brendan Davies in for the Spartans, number 13. Full court pressure by Mid Valley. They're gonna Take it themselves, Grahusky already with six points in this first quarter. Pick your spots to run. You don't run every time, but you pick your spots. Davies with the long range jumper. Well, Forge could take the lead. Now they turn it over. Good defense by Goolsbury. It looks oh. like he double dribbled. Urso yeah. did. Oh, excuse me, Goolsbury, yeah. Yeah. Knocked it down with his hand, so they called that the one dribble, and then he picked it up and started again. Like the lob into Grahowski right here, yeah. One of the back flex screen there, but Kalinowski broke it up. Davies loses the handle, but recovers back to their point guard, Noah Tanner. Good defensive effort by Kevin Welsh on Tanner thus far. Keeping him out of the lane. And a foul again out front. You know, Coach Yanello said to them the other day, you don't want to try to steal the ball off Tanner because you won't get it, and then he can beat you off the drive, and you saw that right there. Welsh went for the steal. So Knee picks up his second foul. He'll have to take a seat. 
with 1.39 remaining in this first quarter. Already the fifth foul on the Blue Devils. Boy, good patience by Noah Tanner on the inbounds play. That's a set play. You go up and you screen, and then you turn and roll back to the basket. I used to score in high school on that play, Bob. I'd only get six points a game, but that's all. The only time I'd score is on that play. Big battle going on inside between Goolsbury and Krahowski. Two big fellas in there. Goolsbury comes away with it. This year, Harris, number one, into the game, and the team in the white, that'd be Old Forge. He is a junior. Outside, no good by Glinski. Coming good. up on the one-minute mark. Good early offense there by the Spartans. Grillsbury pitched it back to Glinski, got a pretty good look. Grillsbury doing a job yep. on the boards. Kalinowski up quickly and stepping in, taking the foul, is number 11. That's Smith, probably a wise foul right there, slowing down the pace. Yeah, that's a good call, Bob. They were going to probably get a two-on-one, so uh, the block call at midcourt probably saved the basket for Mid-Valley. Smith's first foul, six now in Old Forge. We'll see if they play for one. That's not their style, Mid-Valley, with 35 to go, but they may work some clock here. Back of the rim by Glinski. Nice rebound by Davies. You see Tanner, you can't keep him out of the lane. He's so good at getting the ball into the lane. Tanner, downtown. No foul called in the corner. Still time for Old Forge. They want Smith up and under. Old Forge down by one. A good job. Nazir Harris running the floor. Foresby found him. Hold. That's going to be a. They're going to be a foul before the buzzer sounded. That's It'll gonna, be a one and yeah, one. That's going to put them in the bonus. They'll advise reach. Kalinowski shoots the bonus. So Wells picks up his second. Kalinowski to the line to shoot two, misses the first. That's uh. He's a 70% yeah. foul shooter, but when, when you're standing all there by your all by yourself. And that, that will do it. Very dramatic end here to the first quarter and Mid Valley up over Old Forge, 12-11. Hi everyone, welcome back to our special Coaches vs. Cancer game here tonight. I'm Aaron Dugan. Joining me now as a special guest, this is Brian Costanzo from the Brian Ford Joni Foundation. Thanks for being here once again. Thank you, Aaron. Great, uh, glad to be here and we're excited to be back for a, another week of suits and sneakers. Absolutely. So tell me about the foundation and what you guys are all about. Uh, the Brian for Joni, for Joni Foundation, uh, Brian passed away from cancer back in 2002. Uh, so we're actually celebrating, we'll be celebrating 15 years uh, this, coming, uh, this coming summer. Uh, so the foundation was started kind of as a get-together for some friends to keep his memory alive, uh, and it's kind of evolved into something much bigger and better. Uh, Brian was an aspiring, uh, was a great student athlete, aspiring teacher, and this was really something that he'd be uh, really excited about. Uh, and, and so we're just trying to, you know, keeping his memory alive, mm -hmm. do something that can kind of give back and make make a difference for some people. Absolutely, and you've been involved with Coaches versus Cancer for, is it four years now? This is our fourth year as the fourth sponsor year. for the Suits and Sneakers Week, yeah, so we're very excited. Uh, again, great to be part of it. And, what makes you keep coming back and getting involved in it? I, I think for us, for the foundation, you know, Brian being a teacher, a student athlete, uh, this program touches student athletes, uh, obviously in 40-some high schools throughout Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, so it gives us the chance to, to kind of give back, uh, give some people an opportunity to, uh, to get involved uh, and, and really make a difference for those who might be struggling with the disease or, or help them uh, to, move, to move along. And where can we find more information about the foundation? Uh, the foundation, we're, we're on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, BrianForJoni.org, mm -hmm. our website. Uh, jump on, see what, uh, see all the events coming up in the uh, coming summer. Uh, and we're just excited to be back again for the, uh, another year. It was great to have you. Nice to see you again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much. Okay, Bob. Thank you, guys. And as you saw on the screen, you can make donations to Coaches versus Cancer, CBC, Basketball.org. You can make it any time right now and even throughout. Noah Tanner with the steal and the easy two. 
Mid Valley picking up the defensive intensity on that possession. Tanner tipped it away to himself. How much is an advantage now, Doug, that Mid Valley has seven fouls, and any time there's a foul now on the Blue Devils, they'll go to the line to shoot. Well, when you're on the road, you've got to make foul shots, and if you're shooting one on one the entire second quarter, that's to your advantage. So nope. Tanner gets fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. The foul will go against Harris, his first. I take part in that uh, golf tournament every year down at Sand Springs for Joni Golf Tournament. What a great outing and tournament it is, along with some other things that Brian Joni and his dad, Jim, started, the brothers. It's a great organization. Tanner shooting 66% on the season, misses the first. James Urso back into the game. He replaces Goolsbury. Tanner, 5'8", senior. Connects on the second one. Urso's a big body. He can handle Grahowski inside for a little bit, give Goolsbury a break. So neither team able to make any kind of big run so far. It's been close throughout. Patrick Banks in the game for Old Forge, too. Jared Dianello, Coach Jared Dianello likes his offensive ability. Old Forge playing really good defense on Mid Valley thus far. Tanner with a scoop. Ball rolls in. No walk called, and he'll go to the line to shoot one to complete the three point play. A lot of people in this gymnasium were looking for a walk call, Bob. Foul goes on Banks, his first already, the team's ninth for Old Forge. Tanner back to the line, this time to shoot one. He's so quick off the dribble. He's going to need help on the drive. Well, he misses that one. Four-point lead now for the Spartan. Old Forge. Cannot fall too behind against Mid Valley. Team they haven't beat since 2011. Had a chance a year ago. Knee down the line, no good. Another, this time a foul gonna go against the Spartans. Yeah, it's gonna be inbound underneath. It was before the shot. Justin Corney had the foul before the shot. Bob with six minutes to go in the second. Mid Valley has 17 points already. That's a Mid Valley type score. That's not an Old Forge score. Old Forge wants to keep this down 45 points or less. Colin Hazelton, a sophomore, picks up the foul. We're talking with old assistant coach, retired coach Jerry Dempsey. He loves the way Hazelton plays. Only a sophomore, he's the future. Roski gets the home rim, and boy, he's the leading scorer. He has 10 now, 10 of 15 for Old Forge. Good Valley doing a good job shutting down the jump shooters, but they're going to need a little help with Krahowski inside. You think Mike Abdom might go to his bench a little bit more as Davies takes it under, considering they played so hard last night? Yeah, I was going to say, Bob, since the game last night took a lot out of them, they played two or three really tough games in a row, and if they win tonight, they might have one or two on the weekend. So, yeah, you're going to have to rest some guys a little bit. If Mid Valley wins and Holy Cross and or Dunmore wins, there'll be a playoff this weekend. Three-way tie. Well, one place, one game Saturday and the championship for the first half on Sunday. Yeah, which makes drawing that by so important with all these games in a row. If so that happens. Old Forge within one and the three. And Davies goes right around right around. Nice move by Brandon Davies. A scoop shot, very athletic. A lot of different guys on Mid Valley can beat you. The tempo, though, I think favors the Blue Devils. And the longer they can stay in it, Doug, the you know, more confident you be, you're going to be as a 3 and 10 team, especially a young and experienced team. Mid Valley's uh, experience on the defensive end is showing a little bit. So now Noah Tanner picks up his second. He'll probably sit the rest of the way. 
Lets the screen up in the roll for Old Forge. They may get a may get an easy one here versus man to man. Groski oh, can't get the roll. Nice move on the inside. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Get caught in a, a mismatch on the switch. Ursel's first foul for Mid Valley. Grohusky, 60% foul shooter on the line, makes the first. Ursel having trouble handling him thus far. Of course, everybody would. He's so strong. 21 against Forest City is the season high for Grohusky, who started last year. Uh, the team that won the District 2 single A title. Old Forge now in double A, Mid Valley triple A in the new classification system. Yeah, that's going to be a, a taller task now for Old Forge. They made the state tournament uh, winning the district for the last seven years, I believe, straight. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a little different story this time with the new classifications. Hazelton with a walk, and that will take us to our media timeout. 3.46 remaining in the half, a two point lead for Mid-Valley. Tomlinson Floral and Gift wishes the Old Ford Blue Devils good luck tonight. Tomlinson Floral has been specializing in weddings, funerals, parties, and special events for over 43 years. Like us on Facebook, call us, Visit us online or stop in. Back at Al Semenza Court in the Devil's Den. And uh, mentioned Al Semenza, longtime coach here. Now the coach at Western Wayne may be in attendance. I haven't seen him yet. Uh, I'm sure he's here, but he, he <laughs> hides out. He lurks a little yeah, bit. But, uh, a living, uh, a living legend, Al Semenza. I have a basketball court named after you. He took his wares up to Western Wayne now and is turning that program yep. around. Uh, they've got seven wins already, and uh, that's the most that they've had quite some time. This young old Forge team playing well, being led by that guy. Again, he has already eight, seven points in the second quarter alone. Might have to find a way to stop him it may have to go zone they're probably a little leery about going zone because of the shooters on all fours but they're gonna have to shut grahowski down sooner or later four point lead for mid valley is erased oh fours looking for their lead of the game they can't get it palone into the game for mid valley number 21 as is it looks like goolsberry underneath hooping the harm to the line to shoot one Looks like they're going to get a recipe. See, even though Old Forge, there it is again, the hand. Uh, they get knee. Oh, it's uh, this one. Yeah, they're going to get a recipe right there on the arm. You know, Old Forge, Bob, the long outlet by knee up to recipe. They missed it, and that leads into a, a more up tempo game. I'm not so sure Coach Inella was happy with that. They'd rather slow it down. So we are tied at 21. Last three go to Mid Valley. And they are up again. Downtown shot, no good by Varespi. Here come the Spartans. Good look. It was halfway down and came back out. Kalinsky blocked underneath by Varespi. And it goes over to the Blue Devils. Something on the court. Yeah, Jack Gaffney had to go in and grab something on the court. Looked like somebody's tape or band-aid or something fell on the, the floor. Again, the 1-4 high set by Old Forge. They'll run things off the high post. Run some pick and rolls out high and try to post up Grahowski inside. Girls barrel nice. Fronting of Grahowski. Good defense by him. Knocks it out of bounds, but remains Blue Devils ball. It's got to be a lot of work to try to body up Grahowski. He's a big boy. Like to see how Mid Valley does with Tanner and Kalinowski on the bench. Uh, you know.
know if you're Mid-Valley sooner or later, you're going to have to learn to play without those guys in the game. Well, he knows how. Another big bucket coming off 18 last night. It's turning into a one-on-one -on -one game with Grosky and Goolsbury. I have nine for Goolsbury. Kalinowski into the game. Lays it up and in on the steal. Boy, he anticipated that well. He snuck in behind. Red Coleman knees eyes, or Brandon knees eyes the whole way. 7-0 run by the Spartans. Got to be careful if your old forwards. Looks like they're going to run some time. They may even be going for one shot here, Bob, with a minute 20 to go. This is a stall offense that you use late in the game if you're trying to run out the clock. Doesn't even look like they're going to look to score unless they get a slip or a, a wide open guy inside. Clearly, they're running some time off the clock. Control the get, temple. Yeah, they're trying to get Mid Valley to turn their head or have a little lapse on defense. Like that. Up and in for Glinski. I was going to say, that's a long time to hold the ball out of minute 35, minute 40 seconds in a high school ball game. 9-0 run in the half so far by Mid-Valley. So it's tied at 21. Old Forge needs a bucket. Mid-Valley great at getting into the passing lanes, as you saw the last three or four possessions with the steals. Good footwork. They hustle. They anticipate well. Excellent defensive team. Clearly, Old Fords will go for one now. But Back court. Another mistake by the young Old Forge team. And Plenty of time, five seconds left. Yeah. Get the ball in underneath. They see a quick high screen and roll for whoever gets the inbound. They're probably going to go to Kalinowski. They do? Kalinowski. Swing it, Glinski down the lane. Too easy for Galinski, Lay, lays it in. And that will do it to end the half. A big run by the Spartans. And they take an 11-point lead into the break. Special guest coming up with Aaron Dugan as we celebrate and talk about suits and sneakers and coaches versus cancer. Watching the rivalry of the week on my TV WQMY, presented by Wendy's. Welcome back to Old Forge High School, everyone. As the girls take the floor, the Blue Devils are down 32 to 21 to Mid Valley after the first half here on my TV WQMY. Well, we have a great boys basketball game going on tonight, but the real reason we're here is for coaches versus cancer. It's Suits and Sneakers Week. Over the last nine years, over $1.2 million has been raised for this organization, and we have to keep it going. Now, there's someone special on everyone's mind here tonight at Old Forge, and that is sophomore Ryan Skoransky. He's a football player here, and he is currently battling cancer. He was actually supposed to be here tonight, but he couldn't make it. He's actually feeling quite ill, and he's in the hospital. So we want to send our best wishes, our thoughts, and our prayers to you, Ryan. I got a chance to talk with Ryan this past week. He's really an awesome kid. And actually, earlier in the football season, he got a chance to meet some of his heroes. He actually traveled down to meet the Pittsburgh Steelers. There you can see with his best friend, Antonio Brown, there. A really awesome experience. He said it was just one of the best experiences of his life, something he'll never forget. So cool to see that. Antonio Brown, a huge fan of Ryan Skaransky. And I know the Blue Devils football team cannot wait to have him back on the sidelines. Well, tonight is game one of two for Coaches versus Cancer. Our second game will be this coming Tuesday, and that'll be at Scranton Prep, Abington Heights Boys versus Scranton Prep. And as we know, cancer affects everyone, and it affected one of their own in the Scranton Prep community. Linda Jones, the mother of Scranton Prep assistant coach, Billy Jones, is currently battling cancer. But the sports community is really rallying around her, and earlier in the week, 
I got a chance to catch up with her son. Suits and Sneakers Week. 84 teams, 42 games, one cause. High school basketball teams will battle it out on the court and add to the $1.2 million already raised for the organization right here in northeastern Pennsylvania. For one local woman, there's a different kind of battle going on. Linda Jones, mother of Scranton Prep Boys assistant basketball coach Billy Jones, has been fighting a rare form of leukemia. The team has rallied around Linda, the Cavaliers' biggest fan, and gave her a jersey to let her know she was in their thoughts. The symbol of, hey, we're thinking about you, we're praying. Every time you look at the jersey, know that. It's really just such an honor for us, uh, for me personally and speaking for the other seniors, to be there for someone in a time like this. She's part of our family because she's part of Coach Jones' family. What started off as just those six seniors dropping off one jersey turned into a room full of support. Local high schools, colleges, universities, and even referees dropped off gear to fill her room and make her day. Coach Enrico Mastriani sent in a jersey from Marywood. He played a pop pack last Friday. Uh, their head coach, Chris Strong, whose son Jake is actually a part of the prep program. He's a sophomore. Uh, he presented me with a jersey and then just kind of took off. And I'm getting jerseys every single day to hang in my mom's room. It just means the world to her that support is shown through visitation and the sending of this school jersey. Linda's son, Billy, gives those affected by this terrible disease a great message about what is truly important in life. At the end of the day, family's most important. Hang in there and, and fight to be with your family. Spend as much time with your family as possible. Just amazing, and I got a chance to actually talk with Billy earlier today, and he's actually watching uh, with his mother, Linda. So, Linda, we want to send our best wishes to you, our thoughts and our prayers. Stay strong and keep battling this thing. And joining me now is uh, Coach Andrew Kettle, the local director for Coaches vs. Cancer. You saw this package, your guys, they started this thing. What can you say about them? Yeah, um, you know, we're, I'm just so proud of them. Um, you know, we're a family at, with our basketball team and, and Coach Jones and, and his mom, Linda, are a big part of that. And uh, for our guys to, to go down and just show them that we're here for them, we're thinking of them, and we're praying for them, and uh, it's just something that that goes throughout our program and uh, being there for each other, and um, you know, in, in times when you need someone next to you, you need someone by your side, you know that friends and family are there, and um, just um, really proud of those guys for going down and doing that for the Jones family, and you know, we just want to let Mrs. Jones and, and Billy know that we love you, and uh, we're thinking of you, and we're praying for you. Absolutely. Now your game will be Tuesday night, and I know there'll definitely be some coaches versus cancer festivities going on. Yeah, we're excited. Um, you know, f to have the event at Scranton Prep um, against a very good Abington Heights yeah. team. Um, so the basketball end will be terrific. Um, but as far as the coaches versus cancer program goes, we'll have a nice program before um, before the game tips off. We have uh, some guest speakers, and uh, it'll be a touching moment. Um, it, but it'll be. You know, we'll be able to drive home the message of why we're doing this and why we're getting together and, and what this all means to everyone here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Absolutely, and as always, the end of Suits and Sneakers Week is the Hoopla Party, so tell us about that. Yes, yeah, Saturday night. Uh, this year we have a new venue, PNC Field, um, upstairs in the luxury box area. Um, we'll have our Hoopla celebration. Um, it's 21 to enter. Um, we ask for a donation at the door, uh, cash bar, there's appetizers, some silent auction items. Uh, we have a band um, who's kind enough to donate their time to us that night. London Force is going to entertain us. And um, it's a great way to celebrate like we do every year, mm -hmm. um, just to celebrate the fact that we're able to raise the money and the awareness we're able to do here in Northeast Pennsylvania. And something people look forward to every year is that <coughs> basketball gala. Are we having that again this year? We sure are. Uh, plans are underway, and, and um, you know we have a lot of work to do still. Um, but May 13th at Mohegan Sun, at Pocono Downs, uh, we'll have our um, basketball gala, a black tie event. Uh, we'll have a nationally known coach. We'll um, we'll have an honoree. Uh, we hope to have four to five hundred people there. Nice. Some great live auctions, some great silent auction items. It's a really fun night, and uh, it just caps off this great year of coaches versus cancer. Awesome. Well, I know you're going to join the guys over in the booth for the second half, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, have a blast, and we'll talk Thank to you, you later. Thank you. Okay, stay with us. We'll have some special guests when we come right back.
Welcome back, everyone. Before we get the second half started, we're going to talk to some of the fantastic sponsors for Coaches vs. Cancer. First joining me is Nicole Sullivan from Toyota of Scranton. Nicole, Toyota of Scranton, man, they're unbelievable in this cause. What makes them want to get so involved? Well, for us, it always comes back to our community and the students, the teachers, the parents, and so many local organizations. Everybody comes together for a common cause, and that cause is to support Coaches vs. Cancer, and it's just so heartwarming for us to be a part of it. Absolutely. We'll keep up the great work there. And we'll move on now to Chris Howe, the Assistant CEO of Commonwealth Health. I'll ask you the same thing. What makes you want to get involved in this great organization? Well, as Nicole said, it's about the community, yeah. and we're just proud to be uh, part of such a successful and growing movement that Coach Kettle has put together here. And we all know somebody who's been affected by cancer, and uh, we obviously just want to remind everybody that there is very high-quality cancer care here in Northeast Pennsylvania, and I think a lot of times folks forget that. Uh, so we at Commonwealth Health have a strong team of providers working every day to, to win the battle against cancer. All right, well, we thank you for your sponsorship. All right. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching the rivalry of the week on my TV WQMY, presented by Wendy's. stats here a couple guys in foul trouble for SB knee and Walsh and uh, who's on Tanner has two for Mid Valley uh, scoring is uh, Grahowski has 13 for SB has six for Old Forge Goolsbury 10 Glinski 7 Kalinowski 6 and Tanner 5 so uh, it's the supporting cast is doing a better job for Mid Valley than Old Forge is here's some highlights Duck from the first half. Glinski hit that big shot. Kalinowski down the lane. Yeah, you know, you see, here's the, the dish out to Verespi for the, the three-pointer. And then the jumper by Grahowski. He's doing a nice job offensively. Then skip pass over to Glinski. He drains the three, just as he did last night. And then all the way to the basket with Kalinowski. So, Doug, uh, second half keys for Old Forge first. Well, they're going to have to get some more people involved offensively. The Mid Valley is probably in the locker room talking about how to stop Grahowski. So, you're going to need some penetration and some kickouts for three point jumpers for uh, for Old Forge. If you're Mid Valley, you probably don't want to change much. You want to continue to do the same thing. 11 0 run for Mid Valley to end that half. That was huge. It was tied at 21. They didn't score the rest of the way. They got into the passing lanes, Mid Valley did. They, did a nice job stealing the ball and, and converting on the offensive end. Off their defense, that's how they run. They run off their defense. You know, too, Bob, while we have a second here, too, I want to echo the thoughts of uh, Aaron and uh, Coach Kettle. I want to say hello to Linda Jones. I was down to see her the other day. I, know her, I knew her husband, Bill Jones. I forgot the Fruitopia, but uh, Mr. Sunshine says hello, Linda. We're thinking of you. So Old Forge has the ball. They are in the white. Mid Valley in the blue. They are up 11. Mid Valley wins tonight. They could create a three-way tie in the Lackawanna League Division three. Mid Valley comes out zone, Bob, to start the second half. 2-3. They want to bottle up Grahowski if they can. Well, that's a good way to get things started here in the second half. A big three from Verespi. His third three of the night. He has nine. Yeah, as we said before, he's top 10 in Division three in three-point shooting. Back to the triangle and two for Old Forge on the defensive end with Smith guarding Kalinowski and Welsh guarding Tanner. Goldsberry had a nice first half. Back outside, Galinsky. Blue Devil's going to try and push. Shane Smith saves it. Good defensive stop that time by Old Forge. Let's see if the Blue Devils now can go on a run of their own. Get, get back into this one. Mid Valley showed the zone just one time. Now they're back to man to man. Grosky can't make it. G 
Rulesbury leading the break. They're gonna have a jump ball called and it will stay with Mid Valley. Good defense by Varespi to get back on the break. He got a hand in there and uh, they thought maybe it might have been a walk but he had his hand on the ball for a jump ball. Poland gets the start for Mid Valley in the second half. He'll bring a little more offense to the table. As Aaron mentioned, uh, Andrew Kettle now joining us at the table. As both teams fight it out. These two teams went at it a year ago. Last time they met, February 2nd, went to overtime, and oh, Mid Valley won on a last second shot. So these two teams do have a history. It's been heated for the last five or six years, especially in this building. People are right on top of you. Every game's heated down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. Andrew and his grand prep teams know about heated robberies. They'll meet Abington in our next broadcast on Tuesday. Again, Mid Valley with the pressure man to man all the way out near half court. Nice job by Varespi to get by his guy with a foul underneath. Your thoughts on the game so far, Coach? Um, I think a lot of things to be expected. You know, Mid-Valley's a pretty good team. I thought Old Forge's defensive uh, game plan was, was great early. Turnovers kind of hurt them there at the end of the second quarter. But aside from that, I, I think Old Forge is playing a pretty good game. Um, besides those turnovers, they can eliminate those. We'll have a, a good game down the stretch. Yeah, the games that they lost this year, that's been a problem. Downtown the recipe, two in a row for him here. Oh, Forge down just five. They've come out on a 6-1 run. Just what Old Forge needed. Need drove it into the lane, found Varespi on the perimeter. Varespi heating up. Hey, Brandon Davies with the answer. Well, good way to answer it back. Davies is seventh point of the night. Quiets down the boisterous crowd for a minute. Defensive intensity by Mid Valley is a lot better this quarter. So Welsh gives it over to Brandon E. the junior. He gets it back looking for a screen from Grahusky. Great steal by Gooseberry. He's playing well tonight, coming off a big game last night against Dunmore. And he got caught up in the air. He committed to the pass too soon. Good deep by Goolsbury, get into the lane. Let Davies blocked away. Who's it gonna go? It's gonna go to the Spartans. Jared Yanello, his fourth season with Old Forge, didn't like the call. He was right in front of it. <laughs> Randy Wolf and Jared Yanello having a little conversation over there. Right in front of the student section here. Block out, and Gooseberry steps in, picks up the foul. You hate to see your big guys reach 94 <laughs> feet away from the basket, yeah. don't you, Coach? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, he's playing hard and stuff, but, you, you know, you got to channel that, get back. He had possession of the ball. Yeah. Get back, protect your rim. Uh, where are you going to play tomorrow night? You're home against West tomorrow night? We are, yep. Tough game against West Grant at our place. Uh, Looking forward to uh, a good atmosphere against a good team. Glad to be home. This game seems to be getting a little uh, rougher in this yes. quarter. Yeah, let's see what the officials try to control it. A lot of fouls called in that first half. Noah Tanner in the corner, thinking about it. Uh, both teams are playing pressure on the defensive end. Guys get a little excited. Davies. A little confused. I think the old Forge guys were confused there on that last possession defensively. Jared Yanella wants to talk it over. Full timeout. Yeah, they, some guys might have been in man, some guys might have been in zone that time. I'm not sure if it was the triangle too, but they were a little confused. We'll, yep. take, we'll take our own break right here. Mid-Valley's still up here. Even the whole Forge has got some hot outside shooting. You're watching the Rivalry of the Week on 
My TV WQMY, presented by Wendy's. Old Forge Pharmacy supports the Old Forge basketball team. Voted the best pharmacy in the Triborough Reader's Choice Awards. We offer free delivery, free management of your pill boxes, and all prescriptions, insurance, plans are accepted. Good luck to the Blue Devils from the Old Forge Pharmacy. 336 remaining in this third quarter. Mid Valley still leads by 11. Old Forge trying to get make it closer. But Mid Valley's doing things like that with some turnovers by Old Forge. Goolsbury, another big night. Mid Valley's pressure defense is starting to affect Old Forge. Having trouble handling the ball, having trouble completing passes. They're up in the grill in the passing lanes, denying all over. Excellent defense by Mid Valley this third quarter. Need a little runner, no good, but Garhoski with a big board. Can't get it to go, but he'll go to the line. Coach, you were uh, entertaining West tomorrow night. Now, you're you're in the Division Two, is it? or Division one? One. Division yep. one, and they just go straight through. There's no halves, huh? Correct. So Division One and Division Two, uh, we both go straight season. Uh, Division Three and Four, the smaller schools have halves. So, that's so a that's a three-way tie for the first half. And this division. Yeah. Um, and, and in ours, um, you know, we do play everyone in our division twice with a crossover once with Division Two. Yeah, so. you, you play a home and home, and, and you had to go up to uh, play Coach Semenza. Yes, we did. Last night, We huh? did. The namesake of this uh, <laughs> court, right? Yeah, his uh, name's on the court right there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Coach Semenza is doing a great job at Western Way. That's for sure. Again, Old Forge running things off the high post, Bob. Trying to get Grahowski down low. Knee finds the lane, but he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Good move by the six foot junior. 60% shooter on the year at the line. You know, Bob, we said in the open that Old Forge needs to slow this game down, keep it below 45 or so. Mid Valley's at 40 already with two and a half to go in the third. That's, that bodes well for Mid Valley. They want the up tempo. They want the fast pace. Well, early on, it seemed like they were getting the pace they wanted, Doug. Uh, Old Forge, that is. Yeah, and that late run by Mid Valley. Yeah, the, uh, the, the defense at the end of the second quarter there with three steals and then the basket at the buzzer by Glinski. Tanner pushing the pace up with the left hand. No, nice it's move. Tanner. He's so quick. He's so quick to the basket. He's a handful to stop. You know, you, you, you can't stop him all night. You can only contain him, coach. Yeah, and, and in that situation, there's three guys back, and he split them. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Coach Abd is used to his ability to make those. But Respy trying to keep him in the game. His third three of the quarter. Joey Respy doing his part. Down 12 now, the lead at half for Mid Valley was 11. You know, Bob, the thing I like about Mid Valley too, Kalinowski and Tanner, they kind of let the game come to them. They were getting pressure all night. Took it easy, relaxed, and now Tanner picks his spots. So don't forget, they were in a battle last night at yeah. Dunmore. Yeah. This is a good team, coach. They got balance. Yeah. Not much size, but they do have the experience. Goolsbury's pushed. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Spartans want to use that tempo to their advantage. Had to get Harris with the push in the back there on the, on the drive. But you see Mid Valley with the great defense, running off their defense, push it at all costs. That's the way your team plays, Coach. It's more fun for the kids, isn't it? Yeah, you know, if you have the ability to do it, um, you know, it definitely makes it a lot more fun to, to be a part of. And, and it gives you the opportunity to play more guys, too. You know, get more guys and wear the other team down if you have the ability to do so. Welsh back into the game for Old Forge. They're going to need him to shoot it better, Bob, at the remainder of this game. 
coaches like Kevin Welsh. He's the future, good young player. Hasn't scored tonight though, Doug. And I need him to up nice, yeah. look, at, look at the basket a little bit more. Well, J.J. Glinski is one of the best defenders in this league, if not the best defender, and they shows you the respect they have for the, the youngster Welsh. They put Glinski on him. Rainbow off the bank. That'll get him going. That goes in for Kevin Welsh. Banks are open after eight. That'll get you going. Down to 10. Let's see if they can get into single digits, Old Forge. Linsky wise to see if they want to play for the last shot. Yeah, they might be backing it out, running some time. Davies. Here's the big rebound. Plenty of time for Old Forge. Davies seems like he has carte blanche to shoot those threes. Two for three. Tanner reach around with the foul. His third foul of the night. Fifth already on Mid Valley this half. Yeah, if Old Forge is going to climb back into this, they're going to have to get to the line. Two more, they'll be shooting bonus. Knee back into the game. Also, Colin Hazelton makes his first appearance in the second half, number four for Mid Valley. See if Old Forge doesn't run some time and then run this inside back outside for a late three. Under 10 to play. Need a little jumper. No good. Big rebound. Still plenty of time. Oh, a little floater. Good job with, by Welsh. Welsh scores the last five for Old Forge. And it cuts the Mid Valley lead to eight as we head to the fourth. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me now to the Mid Valley Cheerleaders. This is Reagan Hughes and Sam Shalansky. Now, you guys had your Suits and Sneakers Week Coaches versus Cancer game last night, and I know you guys did a lot, so tell me about it. Okay, so our theme this year is Stand Up and Fight, as you can see in our shirts. Um, the theme was coordinated by one of our elementary school teachers, uh, Mr. Lip, and our student council advisor, Mrs. Higgins. Uh, we had a basket raffle, an Apple Watch raffle, and a lot of 50 50 to raise a lot of money for cancer. Awesome. It sounds like were a lot of people there, nice atmosphere? Yeah, the energy in the gym was really crazy, especially being that cancer has touched our community personally. So it was just really great to see everyone come out and give back to a really great cause. Awesome, great job, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Bob? Good job by all the students throughout District 2, Andrew. Uh, I know you're big park and all those t-shirts out, blue to the color this year for Ghosts versus Cancer, but it's all about the students and what they do to raise money. Yeah, it really is, and each community is, unfortunately, we're all affected by this, and every community has a different story, and, and everyone kind of rallies together this week. Um, you know, big rivals play each other, and everyone wants to win, but at the end of the, end of the game, at the end of the day, we're all fighting this disease and raising money and awareness, and. Uh, couldn't be prouder of the student athletes locally. Old Forge trying to pick up the pace. They outscored Mid Valley in that third quarter, 14 13, Doug. Yeah, they got back in it with the Bresby threes and a, a three by Welsh. Yeah, Welsh scored the last five after we talked about him. Here he goes again. Yeah. Oop, that went off the mark, but the Huskies there. Deep pass is caught, and it goes right. Over to Mid-Valley, he's intercepted. Tanner no good. Old Forge dodges a bullet there. The Blue Devil's still in this one, Doug. Yeah. They're gonna have to get a good set this time now. Maybe get it back into Grahowski. He hasn't touched it in a few. Stays uh, with the Blue Devils underneath. Glinsky almost stole that ball off knee. He's got quick hands. Mid Valley man to man underneath now. Watch the lob into Grahowski. And then a back screen. Grahowski at 13 in that 
first half. Not Gavin scored yet, but Gillespie's picking up the pace. Nice flex cut there out of bounds play. Yeah, it's a good pass by the big man. Slower tempo now. Favors old Forge. Tanner pushed it in, and he picks up the foul. Looks like it's going to go against Welsh. Nope, it's going to go against Grahusky. Just Tanner. his second. Tanner, a little gimpy. He went down pretty hard there, favoring one of his legs. He goes down hard a lot. He's tough. He'll be all right. Tough kid, yep. Yeah. Don't forget, you can make donations for Coaches Versus Cancer, cbcbasketball.org, anytime. Four high set for Mid Valley. KB's controlling it out front. Davies took a step and lost the ball out of bounds. Poland wanted to throw it out to the perimeter, but he saw Goolsbury standing out there, so he said, I'll take it myself. So, timeout called by. Mid Valley, it's a full timeout. And Mike Abda not happy about what he sees from his team. Yeah, Wolf Forge is playing really good on the defensive end. Making Mid Valley use up a lot of clock, which favors Old Forge. Here you see the drive. He was going to dish it out to Goolsbury, but he said, I'll take it myself. And it goes off Old Forge, so they'll retain possession underneath. Be interesting to see here the set that Mid Valley comes out with out of this timeout. I know coach coach didn't look too happy there with the execution. So looking for a car or a truck? Make Bernie Caps Auto Sales your first stop. Located right on Main Street in Old Forge, we have quality pre-owned vehicles to match what you're looking for. Search our extensive inventory at BernieCaps.com. A lot of times you can find out what the varsity team runs in the JV game. They run a screen up to the top, to the foul line, and then they roll back to the basket. We'll see if you don't see that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they won't be able to do it now with the 1-4 set. This will be just a cross screen. Down low, try to get Goolsbury posted up. Davies just gets it back out under that five seconds. It's J.J. Galinsky, the junior, has the ball. There remain Spartan's ball. Sometimes against this triangle, too, if you run a flex, it gives you some good opportunity. Yeah, I was saying to Bob before, and I was talking to Coach Al Semenza about it, would you just run your straight man-to-man -man offense versus a triangle? <laughs> uh, we have, yeah. We have a couple sets that we do for a triangle and two or a box of one. Uh, in the past, we've had some guys, like Timmy Rose, Bobby Casey type guys that, that teams would try to take you away. So we have a few sets, but most of the stuff is our man stuff. Old uh, Forge making a run against Mid Valley, a team they haven't beaten since 2011. Can they play spoiler here? Down six. With about five minutes ago, Bob, it looks like Mid Valley was going to run away with it. No, they're going to wave uh, it off. He's got him on the floor. The push on the floor before. Nice play. Ball has to go back to Grahowski. He was pretty much dominating in the first half, and he hasn't seen the ball much in the second half. Here they'll run the flex screen again off the lob at Grahowski. Yep. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Oh, oh man. Passed it right to the wrong guy. Grahowski down. No foul call. Good contest. You know Kalinowski wanted a bump. Rep didn't call it. Credit Grahowski after he threw the ball away. He went down and yep. altered that shot. Ooh. Welsh. Back out to Brandon Knee. Take some time and get a good set. Good jumper by Grahowski over Goolsbury. Can't get that one to go. He's not scored a field goal, Goolsbury, uh, excuse me, Grahusky in this second half. Well, 
Good job by Poland, driving it into the lane, drawing the help. Finding Kalinowski for the easy one. Much needed basket there by Mid Valley, hadn't scored in a while. Kalinowski can't find the range down this end of the court. Knee, no good. Boy, Goolsbury really doing a nice job on the defensive glass, keeping Grahusky away from the basket. Well, you know, they lost Roman Crucifelli last year, Mid-Valley did. He was their big guy in the middle. And really, they only had Galinsky, Tanner, and Kalinowski back. But a guy like him right there, Davies and Goolsbury, who played a little bit last year, Roman. have stepped up their game. Roman Crisofulli taking his wares to Penn State, along with a lot of other Mid-Valley grads. Yeah, Alice Prsklupski is at Bloomsburg, and Jason Kenny is at Misericordia. Coach Abda does a nice job developing high school players for the next level. There's a foul on Tanner. That will take us to our last timeout of the evening. So could go down to the wire here as we take a break. 3.28 remaining in this quarter. And we have a timeout on the floor. Trailer corner on Kaiser Avenue. Taylor has all make and model trailers and trailer accessories you can imagine. From small utility trailers to large enclosed landscape, landscaping units, Trailer Corner has what you're looking for. We offer 100% secure financing. Go to trailercorner.com or search from hundreds of makes and styles. And we are back at Al Simmons Court in the Devil's Den. Bob I, Doug Walsh, joined courtside by Andrew Kettle. Suits and Sneakers Week for Coaches versus Cancer throughout all of District 2. And coming up on Saturday of the Hoopla Party. Change of venue this year, though. Yeah, we're up at uh, PNC Field, um, home of the Rail Riders. Upstairs in the luxury box area. Uh, should be a fun night. Some great band, London Force, entertaining us. We got some silent auction items. Should be a fun night. Joey Verespi's first time at the line tonight, shooting one and one, hits the first. He's shooting 64% on the year, Doug, and that's a big one right there. Well, with 328 to go, they're shooting bonus, and Mid Valley's nowhere near the bonus, so if Old Forge is going to get back into this, they're going to have to make some fouls. As a season high, 19 points for Doug Verespi. Yeah, he's doing his part. We said at the, at the open that he needs supporting cast to help out. Grouski, and he's doing a nice job of it. Doug, what does Old Forge need to do now in the last three minutes or so? Well, they they trail. Yeah, they have to control the boards. They have to force difficult shots. Uh, one or two more baskets by Mid-Valley, and that might be enough. Kalinowski can't get it, and it will go back to Old Forge. You're going to see your Harris in the game, the junior. I think defensively now, obviously, Old Forge has gone man, but they, they can't gamble like they just did there. They got away with one, but... Keep everything in front, play good solid D, and make them take contested shots. It's a good test for a young team. Four starters that are new. The only guy to return was Bring Gahus Ben Gahusky, and he's right there. No foul. Yeah, Goosberry yeah. got back quick. Yeah, you, you touched on it, Bob, right there. This is a, an experienced Mid-Valley ball club and a relatively young Old Forge team, and you see that coming out tonight. Go over to Mid-Valley. No? Yeah, over the top, I think uh, Jack, Jack Gaffney was looking to see. He, yeah, Here's the Goolsbury out all by himself. They thought maybe that Randy Wolf had a foul over there, but he didn't. You have a good long possession if you're mid-valley. Not stalling it, but if you only take a layup. Foul on the floor. And you know, too, if you're Old Forge, you've got three more fouls to give with two minutes to go. If you're going to try to put them on the foul line, you've got to foul quickly. However, Mid-Valley, once they get to the 101, they're a pretty good foul shooting team, so. 
Might want to play just straight solid man to man. Yeah, it looks like they're fouling on purpose now. You know, Coach, I always thought, like right now, sub five guys into the ball game, you're, you're, you're nine through 13 or whatever, nine through 14, commit the fouls and then put your other guys back in. <laughs> nobody, like, nobody sees to listen to me on that one. <laughs> little gamble there, but. Couple guys for Oak Forge have three. Harris is not one of them. He That's, has two. Really? I love when people say, know who to foul. Well, that guy, <laughs> that guy isn't going to have the ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guys that foul on this team, all five of them, they're, they're pretty good foul shooters, so you got to pick your poison, Mid-Valley. Mid-Valley shoots 68% from the line out of season. Ironically, Noah Tanner might be the best yeah. guy to foul. Yeah. He goes to the foul line so many times, though, his Percentage is a little lower than the rest of them. Next one will put him in the bonus. Mid Valley High's lead was 15 in the third. Stands at 10 now. You don't want to foul Glinski because he's the best. Might take a chance on the younger guy, Poland. Oh, good defense. Oh. Yeah, he's got a foul. Looks like Poland will go to the line. Aaron Poland doing a real good job scoring the ball in the second half for Mid Valley. Last two games, how about Davies and Goolsbury, the way they played, Doug? The pace Mid Valley. Everyone talks about Tanner and Kalinowski, but these two guys. Two seniors have stepped up, and they have them in a first-half playoff. And you know, Goolsbury had the unenviable task of trying to contain Grahusky inside, and Grahusky had his way with him in the first half, but Goolsbury has caught up and done a nice job in the second half. Two big, strong guys going at it. Davies has 12 points on the night. I think also the Mid Valley's intensity on the perimeter did a nice job of helping their post of defense. Knee outside, got a three. Timeout, Old Forge. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure, Old Forge isn't going to quit. No. <laughs> no way. Both teams will be bonus the rest of the way now. So do you get a foul quick if you're Old Forge, or maybe wait till it comes over the timeline? Well, since they started following so early, I think I think they will. Uh, you know, everyone everyone's different. Uh, maybe try and get a trap, but uh, they have some outside shooters. Those old Forge duck. They're hanging. Knee Welsh and Joey Respi certainly having a great night from beyond the arc. They definitely needed that. Brandon Knee three. So here, let's look at some district standings going into tonight. Mid Valley going to lead is leading that, looking for win number 13 on the year. A little bit different this year, as Coach knows. They're going to a point system in District 2. Eight teams per classification, if there's eight in there mm -hmm. or more, go to the playoffs. So Dunmore's right there. Redeemer and Wyoming Seminary playing really well. They have turned around, Doug. Yeah, we saw Sun the other day had a good win uh, against uh, Holy Redeemer. They held Holy Redeemer to four points in the first half. They had one basket and two wow. foul shots in the first half. Uh, you see Mid Valley there with two losses to Myers and Holy Cross on the year. That's all. We'll have Myers against Berwick on Valentine's night. Doug and I have a date. <laughs> <laughs> Down at Berwick. I'm in trouble explaining that to my wife, Bob, but uh, maybe she'll I understand. I told you. <laughs> get flowers or something, a timeout on the floor. Romantic evening in, Ber in Berwick with me and Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you ahead of time if you get in trouble. Yeah, my wife wants me out of the house. Yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, double A's, that's a different story. If, you know, Blue, Holy Cross may be the favorite, not in first place right now. A lot of teams from the northern tier, which you're very experienced with. Mm -hmm. Holy Cross, uh, Holy Forge are defending Class A champions. They have a shot in there no matter what the record is. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to get in. You know, once yep. you get in, anything can happen. Uh, the point system this year will be interesting to see how it all shakes out. Um, but once you get in there, as we all know, anything can happen. There you start a student section on Hannah. They have a team each night. 
kind of every time you come here to the Devil's Den, or they're going to get in your face. A little press by 04. There's a quick foul on Noah Tanner. Yeah, you talk about that playoff Mid Valley still smarting after losing in the second round to Riverside last yeah. year after they had beaten Hanover, but they fully expected to be one of those three teams that advanced, and uh, their season ended abruptly. Yeah. Well, didn't Mike Abbas say before the game he thought maybe be playing that first half, second half, they had to play a couple extra games at the end of the year, and it might have caused them to be a little bit tired in their legs. He, How do you feel? How that. do you feel about the halves in the straight season? Well. Uh, when I was at Lackawanna Trail, um, we were in the halves, and, and it gave us opportunities, um, if we didn't have a great first half, for something to play for in the second half. And, and, and it got us through a couple championship games, so um, I'm a fan of it because of that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I can see why people um, may not be as well. Well, you know, the other point too, Coach, is if you lose a player for maybe a month or something, he's injured, you lose right. your best player, well, now your season's not over. You can come back when he gets healthy and, and maybe win the second half. That's right. And, and, you know, if you're a young team and you're finding your way early in the season, too. Kalinowski's uh, no, down right in the middle of the floor, covering his head. No whistle yet. And there it is. They have to play on. And he came down hard. Yeah, the referees had to wait till somebody garnered possession of the ball. Hopefully he's okay. Checking him out, slow to get up. Now since they stopped the game, no matter if he's okay or not, he's got to come out. Here we look at it again, Doug. And the rebound. Yeah, he just he might have got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. He went on the back of his his lower back. Automatically has to come out of the game. Thank God he didn't hit his head there. Yeah. Yeah. It gets scary sometimes when you're yeah. up there. And you have nothing to brace your fall. Old Forge plays tomorrow, Lakeland. Hazleton will check in for Kalinowski. Might want to follow him. Cole off the bench. Right. They're smart enough to get the ball into Tanner. Had to give it away. Yeah. <clears throat> Goldsboro pretty good. He's coming into this game 20 for 27 from the line. You like you like to have a senior at the line at this point too. You know, getting back to the straight season, coach. Uh, you know, you, you, you can you can survive a, a three-game losing streak or something if it's halves. If it's if you're getting it. If you're having a bad way in a straight season, you might not be able to recover either, you know? Right. And and there's, uh, with the halves, there's light at the end of the, like you can, you know, you can rally the troops a little bit. Yeah. You know, come back in and say, hey, we got a new season here. We got, you know, five or six games in the second half, however many it may be. And Goldsberry matches his point total from last night, Doug. He has 18. He put up 36 points in two games. Leading scorer tonight for the Spartans as Looks like they'll pick up win number 13 on the year and head to the playoffs. And Grohusky does not have a basket in the second half. Yeah, they, they must have talked about it at halftime. But, you know, it, it, credit Mid-Valley's defense on the perimeter. They're not yep. allowing the ball to come into Grohusky like they did in the first half. But it'll yep. be interesting to see. I'm sorry, go ahead, Coach. No, I was going to say, people don't understand how, how uh, important perimeter defense is against a post player. Right. Um, because, you know, those guys are battling down there and, and – you know, sometimes the offensive guy has them sealed, but if you have good solid perimeter defense and, and you know, ball pressure, you might not be able to get it into him. Yeah, so. make it much more difficult. And you look at the size, of, the size advantage that Grahowski has. I mean, look at him, he's about 6'3 or 4, and he's, he's well over 200. He's a, he's a force inside, so if he can just post you up and it's easy to get the ball into him, like he did in the first half, he has a field day. Yep. Yeah, they won't shoot it, and it looks like they're not going to foul. They're going to call off the dogs. Bob, we said the number was 45 for Old Forge. They got to 44. However, Mid-Valley got to 54. So that's going to do it. Mid-Valley's into the playoffs along with Holy Cross and Dunmore. The final score, 54 to 44. Mid-Valley wins it.
When we come back, Aaron Dugan will talk to our players of the game and Coach Mike Gabda. There's a three-way playoff coming up in Division Three, and we'll talk about that on the other side. You're watching the Rivalry of the Week on My TV WQMY, presented by Wendy's. So there you see the blue pink shirts for Coaches versus Cancer as we continue Suits and Sneakers Week. The final score here this game, Mid Valley wins it by 10, and they'll now head to the three-play tournament kind of for the first half title of Lackawanna League Division Three, and joining us right now with Aaron Dugan, Coach Mike Gabda and our two players of the game, Aaron. That's right, Bob here with Coach and our two players of the game. Coach, it was a physical battle out there. Yeah. Tell me about how hard these guys fought to win. Yeah, they, we, we always have to play hard in our league to get a win. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Uh, you know, our league's very difficult and uh, Playing at Old Forge is never an easy task. So, yeah, I mean, we, we expected a physical game, and certainly, you know, that's what it was. So at this point in the season, what are you really liking about the way your team's playing? Um, we're finding ways to win close games. Uh, you know, we're getting scoring and uh, opportunities for other guys outside of Brad and Noah, which I think, you know, is only going to make us better as a team. Um, and, you know, other guys are stepping up when called upon. And so I, I think we're starting to click. Um, you know, I, I talked about earlier in the season that it's important to be, you know, gelling at the end of the season and taking that into the postseason. And I, I think we're on the upward spiral, so we're doing we're doing well. We talked a little bit about who you'll be playing, the winner of Dunmore Holy Cross. Uh, what do you foresee for the future of this team? Um, you know, hopefully a first half championship. Uh, you know, we're going to take a day to rejuvenate our bodies after back back, back to back uh, games. Right. And uh, we're going to prepare, see who wins, prepare, and uh, get ready for Sunday. Our guys will be ready, no doubt. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our first player of the game, Brendan Davies. Fantastic job. Thank Everything you. was clicking for you guys out there tonight. Tell me how hard you guys fought for this win. We had to f fight really hard. You know, Brad and Noah were getting denied most of the game. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of people coming off the bench knew what they had to do, and we got the job done. You can definitely tell the way you guys play that you've, you've been playing together for a long time. Mm -hmm. Does that really help you guys click on the court? Definitely. We've been playing together for a very long time, and we have a lot of um, confidence playing with each other. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about some of the goals the rest of the way. Hopefully, like you said before, we're going to win the first half championship, and then from there on, hopefully, we can go undefeated the rest of the season, get a couple more wins in the second half. All right, best of luck. Thank you. And RJ, I got to talk to you about the atmosphere here because I was over here on the other side and this place was rattling. What was it like playing for you? It's always tough to play here. Yeah. It's always uh, hard coming to Old Forge, but we fought together as a team, stayed together, and then we came out with a big win. Everybody getting their, their job done tonight. Seems like all facets of the game were working. Who was really getting the job done for you? Um, it's big, Brendan, coming off the bench. We had, um, with Brad and Noah getting denied all the time, which we see coming. Yeah. We need everyone else to do their job, and which we did tonight. Big contributions off the bench, JJ, Brendan, and we, we came together tonight like we needed to mm -hmm. to get the job done. So where does your focus lie now going ahead? Sunday. We have a big, we have a big game Sunday, and coach will prepare us. We're prepared every game, and we got to go win the first half championship Sunday. All right, 18 points tonight. Fantastic job. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay, guys, back to you. And Doug, uh, he's one of the main reasons why they're in this playoff right now. Two back-to-back two -back games with 18 points, and Mid-Valley, no matter what happens, they're going to be a threat down the way. Yeah, underestimated. His value was underestimated. You know, you, you key on Kalinowski and you key on Tanner, and these other guys are stepping up for Mid-Valley, doing a good job. Another great event coming, uh, Coaches versus Cancer. Andrew, right in the middle of Suits and Sneakers Week. Uh, you have the game coming up on Tuesday at 7. We're going to have a, a nice thing for Coaches versus Cancer starting right at 7 at, at prep. But talk to me about what's coming up this weekend and how the week's been going so far. The, uh, the snow early in the week kind of yeah. threw things into a little, um, you know, uh, downhill spiral for us, but we, we battled, battled back with some uh, rescheduling from the ADs and the coaches, and uh, we got some games in, and, and uh, tonight was great. Uh, we have our hoopla on Saturday. Um, you know, it, it'll it'll be a great week just because of, of all the events that all the schools have going on. It starts Saturday at 7. Uh, free admission, but they want to like to get a donation at the door. Yeah, um, I mean, it is a fundraiser. It is a fundraiser. So we ask, we yeah. ask everyone if they could. <laughs> 
Give us, it doesn't matter the size of the donation. We'll take any anything that anyone can help with. Every every penny counts. We have a nice uh, London Force band as uh, donating their time, which is really cool. Uh, there'll be a cash bar. There'll be some free appetizers. There'll be a silent auction. Um, there's a photo booth. There's all kinds oh, of things. Yep. It'll be a fun night. It'll be a lot of fun. I'll be down there as, as well. And uh, you can you get tickets for the gala too right now, even though you don't know who's going to speak. But it's always a fun night down there. Yeah, it's fun. Um, tickets are on sale online, uh, cvcbasketball.org. You can purchase your tickets. You can purchase a table. Um, it's a fun night. It's it's not your typical black tie affair. No. Nope. Uh, there'll be... Um, free throws there's a basketball hoop there's people wearing sneakers and tuxedos there's women in gowns shooting free throws it's a it's a fun night um for a great cause and and it's um you know when you we can when you can get a great cause like this uh, around the best game in the world um everyone's a winner so uh any, any all, all the donations and everyone's support yeah. we greatly appreciate any hints to doug and i uh, who might who we might see that night nobody's listening we're all right just between <laughs> us uh, you always get a nice name, though. I mean, that's the good thing. Yeah, it's hard. You know, these coaches are, are pulled in every direction, but we're working on someone with a little bit of local ties, and uh, hopefully that will come through. Hopefully they hear this and then we put a little pressure on A little on pressure right, on yep. yep. Good job, Bob. Okay, there you go. CBCBasketball.org, coaches versus cancer donations. Andrew, we'll see you Tuesday. Good luck tomorrow, of course. Thank you. Your game against West. Doug, thanks for joining me right here. We'll have Matt Shaver on Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you down at the Berwick game, Doug. But a good game here tonight. Mid Valley wins it by 10, 54 to 44. I want to thank everyone here at Old Forge for welcoming us and having us here and uh, letting our crew come in a little bit early. A good job by the Fox 56 Sports crew, as always, bringing you this game. So for Aaron Dugan and Doug Wallace, this is Bob Ide saying so long and make a donation. CBCBasketball.org. Watching the rivalry of the week on MyTV WQMY, presented by Wendy's.